Hi, back at the bench today. Doing a repair on a Super X stereo phones, the ST Pro B Y or B V mid 70s vintage headphones and quite unique in a lot of ways. Let's just start off with uh, the build. You might be thinking it's a bit of a convoluted design and you would be right. On the back of there you can see the high pass filter uh, transformer which then passes, uh, I'm not sure of the exact spec of the crossover uh, but it passes the high frequency audio into a very small tweeter and uh, obviously it doesn't need to be loud it's only you know, a couple of inches away from your ear so yeah, you don't need anything too loud you don't want to blow your eardrums out so yeah it's quite, quite a simple design the idea is that there's a screw, a mountain, mountain hole on the back mountain hole inside the ear cup Obviously, this needs gluing down again. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit crusty. It's uh, been there 40 years. Uh, that sits over the top, and the whole lot sits inside of the cup. Excellent. Um, I think quite, quite a few people commented on uh, the actual headphone jack. It's uh, some, you know starts life as the uh, 6.3. Um, interesting to note that the white and the black both go to the shield pin, the outermost pin, which is that one there. Obviously, obviously standard stereo, so left, right, and ground. Um, this was all gunked up. I've managed to uh, they, they, they like press press fitted or sort of pressure moulded a like a plastic uh, so it was all contained and I suppose really thinking about it it was the way to do it because at least then you're not going to get any stress issues over the years they're built to last you know if you consider that that's that's all clamped in and then encapsulated the only stress is on on, on the end of the end of the cable where the stress relief stops and well, to be honest with you, it's not that critical. So, yeah, quite a nice design. And it's certainly built to last. Uh, you know, the, the, there is proper metal on this thing. Uh, it's, it's not uh, monkey metal from uh, some obscure part of Japan or China. Good God, no. But, um, yeah, I just figured I'd uh, do, a, do a very quick video so you can see what's inside these damn things. You know, a lot of people shy away from them. They don't, you know, they either don't understand what's going on, or they they just look at it and run. And that's okay. You know, you don't have to sort of understand it too much to uh, to repair them. You know, th this one's quite straightforward. Uh, this is just a very simple uh, break in the cable. Uh, there's it's it's been continuity tested and it is broken. So I have a replacement length, same diameter. Uh, funnily enough, uh, managed to track some down. Um, obviously, you want to try and keep everything as original as possible, or as faithful to the original as possible. So, um, yep, yeah, it's just a case of gluing that down. Um, I'll go over the, uh, you know, remake all the solder joints anyway. It'd be good for another 40 years, um, hopefully. But. Uh, yeah, other than that, it's just a case of cleaning up, clean, cleaning up the headband. You know, they've they've seen better days, uh, but the audio quality out of these, absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, I I do have to say, if you do see a pair of these, don't be put off if they're reaching you know forty, fifty, you know sixty quid, whatever. Um, are they worth it? Yes, yes they are. Um, I wish I could set up a, a, a stereo microphone on the camera uh, or the PC and actually sample exactly 
um, or even better still put it on a spectrum analyzer and, and, and actually show you what's happening to the uh, the higher frequencies as they roll off in uh, you know from the tweeter side um, absolutely fantastic bit of kit so yeah they might be old they might look olive drab <laughs> excuse the pun um, but yeah no problem go get yourself a pair if you're into your vintage audio stuff uh, they're damn sight better than some of the plastic crap that's out there at the moment just my pennies worth catch you soon